Hello everyone. Welcome to this short tutorial from Pathology Made Simple at ilopathology.com. Today let's learn a very interesting topic in uh, gastrointestinal pathology that is the how to differentiate between gastric and duodenal ulcer. So basically the uh, overview of this topic will be we will enumerate the differences between gastric and duodenal ulcer. So before that let us see what is this peptic ulcer disease. Peptic ulcer disease is basically a chronic mucosal ulceration. That's because of gastric acid secretion or pepsin. You know that affects predominantly the duodenum and the stomach, and it is almost always associated with Helicobacter pylori infection, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, or cigarette smoking. In the earlier videos, I had uh, discussed in detail about the Helicobacter pylori infection and its associated uh, gastritis and other manifestations. So let's move straight into understanding the differences between gastric and duodenal ulcer. The first one, distribution. So duodenal ulcer is actually more common. It is around four times more common than the gastric ulcer. The duodenal ulcers usually occurs in around 30 to 60 years of age group, whereas gastric ulcers are usually uh, common in the age group of more than 50 years. Females are more commonly affected uh, when you see gastric ulcers, whereas uh, the duodenal ulcers are more commonly found in males. Now, what is the location of gastric ulcer? The most common location of gastric ulcer is on the lesser curvature. So, these are the most common locations of, you know, gastric ulcers. There are these are uh, categorized into different types. One is type 1 ulcer. This is the ulcer usually present on the lesser curvature. This is type 1 ulcer. Type 2 ulcer, you know, it affects both a part of uh, duodenal mucosa and gastric mucosa. The pre-pyloric ulcers are the type 3 ulcers, whereas the ulcers present in the cardiac region is known as type 4 ulcers. So basically, the predominant location is the type 1 ulcer that is the most common in the lesser curvature. Whereas, duodenal ulcers are most commonly located in the first portion of duodenum. That's the superior part of the duodenum. This is also referred to as duodenal bulb. Over 95% of the duodenal ulcers are located in the duodenal bulb. Approximately 90% are located within 3 centimeters from the pylorus and usually, you know, they are usually less than or equal to 1 centimeter in diameter. They are basically smaller ulcers. If you look at the shape of the ulcers, gastric ulcers are usually, you know, saddle shaped ulcers. That's, you know, the part of the ulcer on the anterior wall and the part on the posterior wall. Whereas the duodenal ulcers are usually round and the ulcers on the posterior wall tend to be considerably larger than those on the anterior wall. That's because, you know, those on the anterior wall, you know, if it grows larger, they are likely to perforate. This is one of the reasons why the posterior uh, wall uh, ulcers are larger than the anterior wall ulcer. Now, what are the common causes of gastric ulcers and duodenal ulcers? Both of them, it has the same etiology, H. pylori associated and non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug usage. Whereas other risk factors for the development of duodenal ulcers include zollinger ellison syndrome, various malignancies, vascular insufficiency, and even a history of chemotherapy. Now, what are the clinical features? How do you differentiate between gastric and duodenal ulcer? Well, the common features are epigastric burning and aching, dull aching pain in the epigastric region. That's a common symptom. Whereas, the associated pain, you know, that generally intensifies after meals. You know, the food aggravates pain in gastric ulcers. Let us understand why this happens. So, whenever the person consumes food, when the bolus of the food enters the stomach, immediately what happens is that there is constriction at the level of pyloric sphincter. So, constriction of pyloric sphincter, that results in, you know, retaining of the food within the stomach. That's very essential because of, this is very important for the food to be digested with the addition of the digestive enzymes and hydrochloric acid. So, imagine the patient with gastric ulcer, if the food bolus is inside the stomach itself and upon that, you have lots of acid being secreted and obviously, this acid tends to irritate the ulcer. That's why the pain intensifies after the consumption of meal, immediately after the consumption of meal. In contrast, the duodenal ulcer, the pain improves after meal. Let us see what happens in this case. So, this patient is having duodenal ulcer here because the food is contained within the stomach because of pyloric constriction. There is no acid being released 
into the duodenum there is no food in the duodenum immediately after consumption that's why if the patient is already symptomatic the pain tend to improve upon consumption of food but then what really happens after 1 to 3 hours the pain starts appearing that's because the pyloric sphincter relaxes after few hours and then the food the bolus of food passes from the stomach into the duodenum upon that it also has acid along with the food right that's why the pain starts 1 to 3 hours after eating in duodenal ulcers usually these are the patients you know they eat sleep and then suddenly in the middle of the night they wake up with pain that's very characteristic of duodenal ulcers another important manifestation or a feature of duodenal ulcer is that these patients have radiating pain the patient with duodenal ulcers will have pain which radiates to back and which is not so in the case of gastric ulcers anorexia nausea vomiting are more common in gastric ulcer than duodenal ulcers what about the weight loss so obviously there the patient tends to lose weight because you know they eat less Uh, due to fear of uh, aggravating pain whereas duodenal ulcers you know the symptoms tend to improve post meals and that's why they go on eating that's why that's how they these patients you know sort of gain weight so weight loss is more common in gastric ulcers weight gain is common in duodenal ulcers hemorrhage is most likely in gastric ulcers whereas less likely in case of duodenal ulcers if at all there is hemorrhage they manifest as hematemesis in gastric ulcer if at all there is hemorrhage in the duodenal ulcer they manifest as melina that is passage of black colored stools right now now let's move on to understand how these ulcers look both ulcers have a similar appearance they are usually sharp punched out ulcers as i told you earlier they are rounded or oval orifice to the ulcer crater with overhanging margins now what does you mean by overhanging mar- margins that means at the edges of this ulcer the mucosa terminates abruptly this is called overhang margins ne the size of the ulcer might vary see in contrast to this look at this uh, malignant gastric ulcer or gastric cancer the edges are very regular okay the margin heaped up margins what you see here so this is a very classical uh, case of gastric cancer where unlike the abrupt termination of the mucosa in benign gastric ulcers in the malignant gastric ulcers you do have lot of heaped up margins that's gastric cancer but sometimes you know both gastric cancer and gastric ulcers if they are smaller in size it's very difficult to appreciate it clinically it is very difficult to differentiate between cancer and ulcer clinically that is the reason why it is always essential it is always necessary to do a biopsy to rule out cancers in these cases in a very classical case you can differentiate between gastric ulcer benign gastric ulcer and gastric cancer but not always Now let us understand the features of ulcer floor in a typical chronic gastric or duodenal ulcers. The muscularis mucosa, you know, that is usually thickened and extends right up to the wall of the crater. This is a crater. This is a wall of the crater, and this crater can extend deeper till the muscularis. Sometimes it can even perforate. Right. So classically, there are four distinct zones, which was originally described by Askenazy. The first zone is a necrotic debris where you find layer of purulent or fibrinopurulent exudate. The second zone is an inflammatory zone where you find lots of non-specific acute inflammatory cells. The third zone is a granulation tissue zone, whereas the fourth one is a f- zone of fibrosis. So four zones: one is necrotic zone, inflammation zone of granulation tissue, and zone of fibrosis. This is a classical histological appearance of a chronic active gastric ulcer or a chronic duodenal ulcer, whatever peptic ulcer basically. Now, what are the complications? perforation as i told you it's more common in duodenal ulcer the posterior ulcer the posterior ulcers are the ones which often perforate you know they perforate into the pancreas and then they cause pancreatitis whereas gastric ulcers perforations are less common as compared to that of duodenal ulcers the most important one is the risk of malignant transformation the risk of malignant transformation is evident is there in gastric ulcers whereas it is extremely uncommon or even nil in case of duodenal ulcer so how do you treat treatment is basically the same for both of these ulcers you know you um, consider 
eradication of H. pylori and then neutralization of gastric acid primarily with proton pump inhibitors and you have to withdraw these non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs which may interfere with mucosal healing. And finally, if it is not uh, responding to the medical line of therapy, obviously the patient will be subjected to surgical therapy. So that's the end of understanding the uh, differences between gastric and duodenal ulcer. Hope you have liked this video. If you have liked this video, hit the like button. Do comment if you have any queries or if you find any other differences, you can add them in the comment section. Don't forget to subscribe because I am coming out with many more interesting videos. And do share if you find this video useful. Thank you.